major uh, hardware failure. So my computer's acting a little strangely, but I think I've got it figured out. Yeah, if there's some little glitchy things along the way, that's what's going on. Um, so, uh, you know, we've talked about sequences, we've talked about infinite series, we looked at um, the idea that an infinite series could converge. We defined what that means to converge, right? That that sequence of partial sums um, approaches a finite value. Uh, I even showed you a geometric, like we can see if a geometric is going to converge just by looking at the common ratio. And then um, in a more general sense, uh, with some some series that aren't necessarily geometric, uh, we found there's a if you look at the, the sequence of terms, there's the nth term divergence test. You know, if the nth term isn't approaching zero, your infinite series is not going to sum to anything. So uh, we're at a good spot here in terms of let's transition a little bit and start looking at now um, the real work in chapter eight, which is okay, so how do we prove that it does converge? And what we're going to develop here are a bunch of um, tests, different kind of ways to test to see if a series does converge. And um, today we, we're going to look at two particular tests. Um, and oh, here comes one of those tech glitches. Here we go. Um, I'm going to be looking at the um, what's called the integral test. And we're going to be looking at something called a P series. So um, integral test. Okay, and we'll look at that one first. And then we're going to define something called a P series. Um, and we'll be able to talk about convergence or divergence based on the fact that we know we have a P series. Okay, so um, the integral test is, uh, as the name implies, <laughs> involves integration. And basically, this is this look, if we have a function f is a positive continuous and decreasing function. Um, for um, x greater than or equal to 1, OK? And if a sub n, OK, each term in the sequence is equal to f of n, then here's what we know. The sum n goes from 1 to infinity, a sub n. And the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx, OK, uh, either both converge or both diverge. OK, so um, yeah, basically, if you can if you could take the sequence, whatever the, the generating function of the sequence is, uh, and match it up with a function of x, um, that's positive and continuous and decreasing um, from x equals one on up, um, then we have the same convergence divergence behavior as we do for the series. Now, um, I should warn you that in this part of the book, Dr. Larson likes to bury some actually kind of important information in the smallest font possible, it seems, at the bottom of the page in, in various notes. And on page 577, where he introduces the integral test, we have just such one of those notes. And it's, and it's talking about the fact that for series convergence, um, it really doesn't matter what happens in the first n terms. Okay? Um, it, it doesn't matter if, it, 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 if the first 20 terms are, are you know, bouncing around or doing something weird. But eventually, after x equals 20 or x equals 50 or whatever, we see the, the convergence behavior occur. Because the first 20 terms is a partial sum that is finite, we don't really care. Or the first 10 terms or five terms, whatever. So um, the note at the bottom of the page here is really important 
uh, and, and, and I feel uh, like Dr. Larson kind of lets us down in, in this chapter a little bit by hiding some of this really important information down in the bottom of the notes. So um, in this case, you know, but, you know, it said for X equals greater than or equal to one, then we can go from one to infinity of our term. But that does actually doesn't matter. As long as this, it, eventually they line up at X equals whatever number, um, then we have the same convergence divergence behavior because we don't really care about the first whatever finite number of terms of, of the series. And um, we just wanna make sure that the infinite part that we're adding on approaches a finite value. And so, um, yeah, I, I think the better way to say this, um, that, you know, th this condition is satisfied, uh, this, this test is satisfied, Um, if um, x greater than or equal to some capital N greater than or equal to one um, is, is true. A sub N equals F of N. Okay. So we don't really care about the first however many terms of whatever capital N is. Okay. After we get past that number, if there's agreement between A sub N and F of N for all um, X, then, then we can still use this, um, still use this uh, uh, test to prove convergence. So, um, Let's take a look at a couple of examples of this um, before we press on here. Um, and I, I'm going to use a, my first example um, is one that I used in the previous video. I said, um, you know, if you go from one to infinity of one over n, and I said, you know, when we were talking about the nth term divergence test, I said, okay. You know, kind of that's kind of high up in the hierarchy of things I'm going to try first. You know, what is the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n? Oh, it's zero. And remember, how I, I said, okay, the nth term divergence test will only prove divergence if the limit is something other than zero. The fact that this limit is zero has no bearing on um, whether we know convergence or divergence at this point. Okay. And so, um, what I'm going to do here is prove what I said in the previous video, which I said, well, and in reality, this series actually diverges. And I'll show you how it diverges, because if you think about it for a minute, do you know a, um, a function that matches up with that pretty easily? Yeah, how about 1 over x? Okay. And for x greater than 1, a sub n equals f of n, right? If n is two, you get a you get a half, and one over x would be one half. So everything matches up nicely here. Is that function positive? Yes. Is it continuous? Well, for x greater than zero, it is sure. Uh, is it decreasing? Yes, it is. Okay, one over x decreases, right? We know what the limit of that is. We know it goes to zero. So, so let's talk about that for a second. What is okay? So if that's all true, then this integral will have the same convergence divergence behavior as our series. And what is the integral of one over X? You got it. So we have the natural log of infinity minus zero because natural log of one is zero. And what do you know about natural log? Yeah, it's, it's, it goes to infinity, right? It's it's slow, but it it is continuously increasing, right? Um, yeah, it gets it 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 never uh, it never stops growing. Uh, it just does so at a really slow rate. So this is infinity. So the integral diverges. So what do we know about the series? It is also divergent. Um, so the series one over n, one to infinity, diverges by 
the integral test. And that's a great example of, uh, of one that would be divergent um, because the integral would diverge. All right, let's take a look at another one. Uh, yeah, you could probably guess what's going to happen, but uh, we'll, we'll leave you in suspense if you're not sure. <laughs> Here we go, one over n squared plus one. All right, so can you come up with a function of x that matches with one over n squared plus one? Yeah, how about one over x squared plus one? You got it. Yeah, let's let f of x be one over x squared plus one. Positive, yes. Continuous, yes. Decreasing, yes. M meets all the criteria. Matches up really nicely with the one over n squared plus one. So for any n greater than one, uh, a sub n will equal f of n. So what we need to do now is integrate it, okay? Okay, what is the integral from one to infinity of one over x squared plus one. Um, oh, one, oh, sorry, dx. Do you remember what one over x squared plus one? Arctan, yeah. Arctan of x on the interval one to infinity. Okay, so now you have to remember, okay, so as x goes to infinity, right? Right. If, if we were technically doing this correctly, when we're doing improper integrals, right, what we're really saying is, oh, okay, so the limit as b goes to infinity of arctan of x evaluated on the interval 1 to b. Okay. And so its limit as b approaches infinity, arctan of b minus arctan of 1. Okay, um, uh, sorry. So what is the arctan of one? Let's start there. Well, hopefully you, you know that one. So it's going to be something minus pi over four. Okay, so what value does arctan approach as B approaches infinity, right? So now if you think about what the function looks like, right? Hopefully, yeah, you get it. Uh, it's pi over two. So what happens here? Pi over two minus pi over four, pi over four. So this integral, this improper integral converges to the value pi over four. So what do we know about our series then right here? Okay, the series converges. by the integral test. All right. Um, so uh, this is a great example of a convergent one. So yes, we saw a divergent one and now we've seen a convergent one. Okay. And, and when, when you get this nice convergence, then you know that we know that our series is convergent. What does it converge to is a totally different question, okay? The integral converged to pi over four, okay? But that does not mean the, C, the series will converge to that, okay? They're not, they're not the same. They don't have the same sum. Um, the, the integral is, of course, a continuous function, so it's a continuous area underneath there, um, whereas the series is a discrete function. Um, so they won't, uh, they won't necessarily converge to the same values, okay? But right now we're not concerned with what does it converge to, we're just con concerned with does it in fact converge. And sure enough, there we go, it does. So that's how the integral test can help us determine convergence or divergence in the case of the one here with one over n. Um, it's just nice and, and easy if you can come up with a simple function that is, uh, that is one you know how to integrate. Um, then it makes life pretty easy if you're determining convergence. Now, there's some functions that we're gonna be working with here that don't have nice, easy integrals. Um, 
And so then there's going to be some other tests that we're going to need. Uh, so we'll, we'll be working on those um, later this week and next week. And, and as we develop our, our set of um, convergence tests, um, you know, we'll have a couple of different techniques for that. But so this is our first main one, uh, the integral test. Well, I'm sorry. It's, it's our first one that, to establish convergence. We had a test for divergence already, the nth term divergence test. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm talking about now being able to prove convergence. Okay, so um, the next one. Okay, I, I mentioned at the beginning we we're going to do two things today. We're going to do integral test and we're going to do something called a P series. Talking about P series. Um, and P series are a very special kind of series. And, and so, um, P series looks like this. It's one over n to the p power. Okay, now you can see why it's why it's called a p series. Okay, and um, you've already seen in the the first example I did here an example of the p series where p is one. Okay, that series actually has its own name. That's called the harmonic series. Okay, it's a special p series. with p equal to one. So exactly the one we did before, it actually has its own name. Um, it's called the harmonic series. And um, the, uh, the, uh, the reason that it's called that, um, in, in music, strings of the same material, diameter, and tension, whose lengths form a harmonic series produce harmonic tones. Um, and so that's why it's called the harmonic series. It has to do with music. So there's a nice parallel here to our, to our stringed instruments out there for you guys. Um, all right, well, uh, um, what I wanna get back to is the P series. So um, for the P series, uh, once we recognize we have a P series, then convergence actually gets really easy, okay? Um, the P series, series one to n, or n equals one to infinity, of one over n to the p power, converges if p is greater than one, and diverges if p is between zero and one, and that should not be a, um, oops. That should not be an or equal to there. Sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, if P is zero, then it's not a P series anymore. <laughs> it's just one, um, which the sum of one to infinity is in fact, um, is in fact gonna be uh, uh, in divergent because it's just infinity. Okay, so, um, so for P series, uh, we get a real nice, um, a, a real nice, easy way to determine convergence. So when you recognize that you have a P-series, um, just try and figure out what the power is and show that that power is, you know, greater than one, you've got convergence, less than one, you've got divergence. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, the integral test is actually a great way to prove this. Um, you know, the integral test, we just showed how with p equal to one, it would be um, it would be divergent. If you had p between zero and one, right? You'd be integrating from one to infinity, you know, one over x to the let's say you know one half power dx, right? And that's x to the negative one half power, so then you would integrate and you would get two x to the one half power on the interval one to infinity, right? And you can see how that's gonna happen for all of them, right? All the all those powers in between, right? So um, yeah, you get, uh, you get infinity every single time because 
x to the one half is x goes to infinity, right? This is technically speaking, right? I'm going to be writing this out, you know, as much as I can at first, but right, we all know what actually is happening, right? It's the limit as b approaches infinity, right? Two x to the one half of, on the interval one to b. Okay, so that's just going to be infinity minus minus two, which is still infinity. Uh, pick whatever value you want between zero and one, and obviously the same thing's going to happen every single time. Okay, so that's why those are all divergent. Okay. And if we change, if we pick something bigger than, um, if we pick something bigger than one, right, what happens, you know, um, let's pick two, right? Well, then you get, um, uh, negative one x to the negative one power, right? On the interval uh, one to infinity. Okay, I know, I know, I know. Limit b approaches infinity, negative one over x from one to b. Okay, well, as, as, as b goes to infinity, what happens at our upper limit, right? limit is b approaches infinity negative one over b that's just zero right minus well as if you put in one you get negative one so that'll converge to one um, and so our p series would converge if x i'm sorry if p was two and try it with p equals three or four or five whatever you want um it's always going to work out the same way so uh, you know, the, the, the series will be convert. I'm sorry, the integral will be convergent. Therefore the series will be convergent. So, so there's your P series. Um, love the P series, love them because they're so easy. You just look at the power and go, yep, convergent or nope, divergent done. Um, I mean, you need to put down Y, you know, because it's a P series power of, of where it is, but, um, it's a, it's a, it's a nice, easy little series. So, all right, uh, just to kind of summarize where we are, uh, oh, my busted trackpad again. Um, you know, we now have um, a couple of different ways to prove convergence divergence. Um, you know, well, let's go backwards. We have a P series, okay? We have the integral test, okay? We have the nth term divergence test. And we have a geometric test, geometric series. So yeah, so we're starting to develop a pretty good toolkit here for how to determine if a series is convergent. Um, and that's kind of what we're gonna keep working on here uh, over the next couple of days. Like I said, we've got um, a couple more different tests that we're gonna be unveiling as we go along. All right, guys. Uh, well, thanks so much for uh, tuning in and checking this out. Um, I'll see you guys in class. Have a great weekend.